guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today I have Mini Minter, Mini Minter back on the line. Mini, what's up, man? How you doing? You got my name wrong. Video's over. It's done. Is it's it really over? Ash. I heard a rumor that you stole your name from a different YouTuber. Is that true? A vlogger or I something? Mm, no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, I heard there's another Mini Minter out there. But either way, guys, uh, we're back on the line. I'm not gonna re I'm not gonna re-record this intro. This is it, baby. This is it. Uh, so right, how you cute. doing, man? Welcome to the channel. Oh, thank you. It's it's been ages. Even it has it's been, been like a month. It has been but, a month or two. I felt it was overdue. Yeah. You're back on the channel. I, I one of my uh, the reason I brought you back is I asked you pick out your top five ladder decks for like the four thousand to five thousand range or so because I get so many requests from players uh, asking for good decks in that range. So I figured I'd reach out to you because your account or your is this your mini account or your main account? Because I know you're trophy pushing last season. Uh, this is like I like to call it my main account because it's got my name and I use it for competitive, but mm -hmm. I push ladder. 10 gotcha. times more than I play on this account. Yeah, because you finished at like 7,000 7, trophies or something last season, right? Last season, I finished somewhere around the 7K range. I got to 7175 with that saucy RG. Yeah, and that's, that's the deck that we're looking at right now, man. So it's a it's a Royal Giant Furnace. I probably shared this deck on the channel before, but it's you're still your favorite Royal Giant deck, eh? By far. And the part that I like the most about it is, you know KK, right? Yes. The bait god. I yeah. copied the deck from him. I was like, bait god, RG. <laughs> yeah. I can make it work. Yeah. So it's 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 royal giant double dragon. By the way, feel free to hop into a match right now. We'll keep this video moving because we're gonna do a live match with all his top five decks, guys. And here we go. We're into one. So tell us a little bit about why you like this deck over all the different versions of royal giant out there right now. Well, for starters, the furnace control aspect is really good for this RG deck since it's a lot more counter push based than a lot of people might think instead of just dropping the RG at the bridge and have the Mega Minion take out everything else. Mm -hmm. I tend to play it a lot more slowly and patiently. Okay. Especially on ladder. Sometimes I may get a little bit too patient, but it's because I'm waiting for that proper push. And usually, I'd say 70% of the time, I'll take the tower once I get my good push with the counter push like babe drag mega minion okay and it's definitely a lot more patient deck than aggressive okay interesting and, and obviously getting nice va lightning value there so is that kind of how you're playing things like oh look at this this is why we're doing this video i guess right just to deal with the 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 e, the e barbs at the bridge yeah it's not like this has happened every other video this is something that maybe every video that you join me on because we do these like these mid-range trophies but like we never see elite barbs in any of my videos ever which is why i like doing these videos so let me ask you this about getting back to the deck strategy mini is how often do you drop Royal Giant in back of your King Tower in a deck like this? Oh, or is it always at the bridge on a counter push? I personally have never put it behind my King Tower. Okay. Cause it I used find, to... find it to be a horrible strategy because the point of Royal Giant is to get a push where your opponent doesn't have the elixir and or time to think and counter you. Mm -hmm. And doing that pretty much gives them a chance to play P.E.K.K.A. Magnite E drag and then plan out a whole defensive strategy. Yeah. And it's just not a good idea, especially since it's so RG reliant with the buff we got like a month ago. Mm -hmm. It does 279 for me right now. Uh, Whoa. Le level 11 standards. But yeah, putting it behind the back, if you're playing against a pack of player, you can be a pack of player, but only if you get those RGs at the bridge and you Inferno Dragon on top and be wary of the kind of they have like Electro Wizard. Yeah, or, or e -drag. Electro Dragon. Yeah, mm -hmm. e -drag being everywhere, but it's still not, I don't think people have really leveled it up enough to be super popular in this trophy range. But even if you're going, obviously you played this deck at the very top of ladder where everybody has e -drag seemingly in every deck and seemingly everybody has it maxed out. So how do you deal with, with e -drag or e -wiz, uh in this case if your opponent has it ready for the Inferno Dragon, if they have like P.E.K.K.A.? It's honestly not so hard. You see right here, I'm at 10 Elixir when I play the RG. Mm -hmm. And if they had an E-Jag there, it wouldn't make a difference at all. Yeah. This Lightning takes it out completely. Mm -hmm. Inferno Dragon can get value. And just happy days, honestly. Yeah. Lightning is very broken. 
What about guards? Do you play them in front of the Royal Giant in that deck sometimes? Especially, again, if they do have, like, that P.E.K.K.A. or Mini P.E.K.K.A. or something like that? Yeah, sometimes if they've got Mini P.E.K.K.A., it's definitely a good call to gotcha. play. But then you're also going to have something else. Mm -hmm. And the next so deck, take man... take care of the Mini P.E.K.K.A. Uh, sorry, moving on to the to the next deck. First of all, that deck seems relatively simple to play, and that's really, you know, as much as the Royal Giant still has kind of a reputation of being a dirty card, I stand by you on that one. That deck is so solid, and it's fairly easy to kind of get the hang of, too, so I'd recommend that one. This one, I respectfully cannot agree with you on, but hey, maybe you can prove me oh, wrong in the gosh. arena, dude. Here we go. Dude, Just, yeah. just watch. Just uh, that, watch. Hey, Magic Archer, you, you put it, you're telling me it's not dead. I'm telling you it's not dead, and I will fight anybody who says it is dead. You will fight people. We we are a non-violent channel here, Mini Mint. In maybe... the arena, Ash. In the oh, arena. Oh, I got you. Oh, okay. Maybe on, maybe the other Mini Minter YouTuber who you stole your name from uses uh, uh, cheap shots like that. I don't know, yeah, but... Maybe. <laughs> all right. So, now in all reality, you are still a fan of Magic Archer. Obviously. That's my boo you're talking about right there. All right. We'll see how you do. So this deck does have three of the nerf cards. Magic Archer, Royal Ghost, and Royal Hawks. But Mini obviously still is a fan. Me personally, uh, and obviously Mini's the a billion times the player that I'll ever be. But me personally, I would recommend probably subbing in Dark Goblin for uh, Magic Archer. But here we go. Can a Dark Goblin do that? <laughs> Die to Barbarians really quickly? Yeah, I think a Dark Goblin could handle that. Oh yeah, only two shots Magic Archer is about four. Look at you, bullying uh, level 10s up in her. What are you doing? What are you doing? You well, bully? look at the card levels, Ash. It's all there. <laughs> That's true. Level That's 10s true. is maxed out of Lee Barbarian. <laughs> all right, so here we go. About one minute into this match, and he's playing like an aggressive bridge spam deck. You are also, you have, well, I guess not really bridge spam. My bad. <laughs> so now it's a battle at the bridge. Are you a believer of the the old saying is you have to win the, the river battles or the bridge battles? Well, you tell me. Did, did my P.E.K.K.A. win that and proceed to get damage on his tower? No, so apparently you're not. No. Okay. So why is that a misnomer then, especially in this deck specifically? Well, right now in the archetypes that we've got, he's got more of a control thing with Zappies going on. But you know I got my sexy magic archer to, <laughs> to shut his Zappies down. Yep, but he's got a lot of annoying cards, especially for the deck I'm running, like mm -hmm. Bandit and he was which seems to not die regardless of the levels going on here mm -hmm. but see dark goblin is so con look at that can a dark goblin do that dark goblin can cannot do that that was a really really nice connection for you and, and, and prior to that point you had not played once the the, the royal hogs so do you find yourself with a deck like this oftentimes being a little bit more passive in the first two minutes and then starting the royal hogs like afterwards yeah, definitely got to play this passive, especially since, like I said, he's got the control aspect with Zappies. Mm -hmm. And if I do not kill all of the Zappies, then... Oh, God. Gotcha. So, Magic Archer, I this time, I, you know what? This time, Magic Archer definitely coming through for you. Not gonna mm -hmm. lie. Like always. Yeah, not gonna lie. That's my boy right there you're talking about. <laughs> he's See, okay. Now we, we basically just won the game here. Look, two Magic Archers. How is he going to stop this? We'll Tell see. Pekka. How is he going to stop this? Pekka? Fireball. Pekka's going to get it. Oh, uh, see. Nope. We just... Well done, Magic man. Bar. So Magic you're... archers make him waste fireballs. That's the key. You, you, you're not going to waste your fireball against a Dark Goblin when you're playing true. against this deck. Well, even, though you, even though you did fireball a Dark Goblin this match. But yeah, I get your point. Yes, but <laughs> he did not have a Magic Archer. That is true. That is true. So you're using the reason you like Magic Archer in that deck is because you have the Flying Machine, the Royal Hogs, the E Wiz, and the Magic Archer is feasibly four cards that the opponent could be using their Fireball on. Makes sense. Yeah. You made me a believer. I can't argue with it anymore. Moving on to the next deck, we got a Golem, and this is basically the Golem E Drag deck repurposed with Baby Dragon. Maybe. Why do you like this deck? And feel free to hop into a match too. Well, I personally like Babe Dragon because unlike 90% of the community, I don't see what's so broken about E-Drag. Ooh, Babe really? Dragon. So not only do you love Magic Archer, but you don't think that E-Drag is, is overpowered or or powerful no, in general? It's not broken at all. It's useless alone. And whenever it's paired with something else, um, the abundance of lightning really just makes it not so broken. Yeah, well, it's definitely, there's, I can't argue with you there in terms of people 
adjusting the meta for the card, which does give you an indicator of how powerful the card was, the fact that people are now running Lightning in a lot of decks, such as this one. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I agree. I posted a poll uh, recently, many, about, like, should they emergency nerf the E-Drag going into CRL World Finals? And even though people voted yes, major the majority of people, I actually would... I'm with you there. I don't think it needs an emergency nerf. I do think that it's a really strong card, though. Yeah. <laughs> what is this deck you're going against? It's, like, it's up to debate. It's it's up to debate. Yeah, I think it maybe needs a little bit of a stat nerf. Uh, very, very small next... Uh, Ooh, look at this. I'll let you deal with this first. It's fine. This isn't going to do anything. It's all under control. Okay, all right. What about this? Tag. I heard Tag uh, on his last video while I've got you on the, uh, on the topic of nerfs and buffs. What <laughs> Tag told me, or he didn't tell me, he told his subscribers that he thinks that Prince is the card most deserving of a nerf right now. And since the opponent just hit you with a Prince-Loon combo, you want to respond to that? That's a very respectable statement. I okay. mean, Prince has been around for, what's it, like three months now since it got its health buff. Mm -hmm. It's viable in pretty much any archetype, Miner, Mortar, Golem, Giant, anything you can really think of. That That's a very um, respectable statement. All right, of so course, you agree. he knows what he's talking about. Indeed. And After must... learning from a master like me. <laughs> you taught Tag everything he knows? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I think that, uh, how about me? I am going to continue my trend of going against pros, which is usually not a smart thing to do, and say that I, I'm, I'm okay with Prince. I don't think he's like, he needs an emergency, not an emergency, certainly. He wasn't calling for that. But I don't think that he necessarily needs a nerf. I think he's really strong, but I don't think he's like overpowered, in my opinion. But anyway. Overpowered? Here... No, because he's definitely dealable. With, it's not like. He, oh, he's got Prince, so you're going to lose the game. Yeah, but you just think he provides a lot of value in a lot of different decks. He does, and it's fairly hard to counter if you don't know how to. Mm -hmm. So so back to this deck here. I mean, it's, it's a pretty standard Golem deck. That's why we've been talking about like balance changes the whole the whole uh, match so far. <laughs> and this guy's been incredibly, like, way too aggressive. And this is the reason that I don't do these too frequently, like these mid-matter uh, ladder videos, rather. Just because sometimes you run into opponents who do crazy things like drop a... a uh, a Wiz Valkyrie, but the Wiz first at the bridge. Nothing against a, a Phil, the, the Phil the Phil here, but <laughs> but sometimes it's just not super accurate. Uh, but any, either way, do you have any like comments on that deck now that we've watched the entire live match? <laughs> well, I mean, you saw it turn out. It was a fairly patient deck, like I said. Mm -hmm. um, Baby Dragon, um, Magmanians has the same combo in the Royal Giant deck. I find it to work fairly well. Mm -hmm. And Baby Dragon with NATO, just you can't really lose the splash. The hardest splash aspect that this deck would go up against is probably 3M and 3M Ram. But other than, th than that, and Pekka, Pekka and 3M would probably be the two things that this deck would struggle against. But it's never impossible with this deck because you've got Tornado to pull Pekka other lane or pull 3M one lane and Lightning all of it. Mm -hmm. And lightning, you don't even need the NATO. You can hit all three. So this deck is fairly well balanced, and the ice wizard to control. You know, what? if you want to talk about cards that need nerf slash tweaking, yeah, ice and wizard is hop one into of those the next match while you're talking about it with a three musky right. deck. Which deck do we have? Three, three musky or hog? Yeah. Three musky. All right, all right, hog will be last. Yep. And yeah, ice wizard is so abundant in everything, and. Like, it started off with the Graveyard and, and the Hog, like the Hog, Tombstone, Ice Wizard, Mega Minion deck. Mm -hmm. And Ladder that a lot of mm -hmm. the pros ran. Yep. And now it's in Golem. Like, and look at this guy hitting you. Yeah, that it, 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 went, it went from Graveyard to Minor to, and this guy, trying to give you your first L of the video here, hits you at the bridge with everything he had. Relax, it's all under control. Uh, okay, sounds good. It's so we're back oh, at Three no. Musketeer here. He fireballs you. So tough matchup, not the start necessarily that you that you would you know, were looking for there. So how do you recover? How do you stay the course as a Three Musketeer? Do you keep pumping? Okay, you Three musky same lane. Yeah, I didn't have my pump and cycle, or else I definitely would have gone with it since he wasted a fireball. Mm -hmm. Here I'm just gonna try to overwhelm him since he wasted. Let, let me ask you this, Mini, as you go in with this monster push. Oh, no. Like the perfect counter deck. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, 
that that's I'm gonna, gonna have be to rough. Eat that too. That's, that's the that's the worst part. Yeah. Okay. Wow. This guy is like he's he's going for the three crown right now. He's like, okay, maybe he's not. I thought he's gonna hoard you again as well. Uh, what was I saying? <laughs> I forgot. Before I got spammed. Oh, yeah, I was gonna ask. Your three musketeers are level ten. Uh, do you find it a incredible disadvantage to? have your three musketeers die to fireball meaning that like would you still recommend people obviously you would because you shared the deck but is it okay for people to still run it that way and is it is it insurmountable or like how do you feel about that with the under level three musky it makes micro level differences mm -hmm. in some scenarios due to the um like what is it... <laughs> all right good job you're back in this oh and he wasted a fireball okay She's got Mega Knight, so this is going to be fairly interesting. Yeah, because so what do you do in a situation like this? Obviously, the absolute perfect counter, counter deck to you. Uh, you couldn't find really a diff more difficult matchup unless you had, like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Royal yeah, Ghost I'm going to have to go for the three crown. Hopefully, he wastes a Mega Knight on the right. On the right. Yeah, yep, there we go. All right, we're going all in. Doesn't even get the, the death, the, the splash, enter the arena damage. That's going to help you out a little bit on defense, but you're going to go all in. Doesn't really matter about defense. Oh, Fireball me, please. Where's fireball that fireball? Me. There. Uh -oh. oh. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, GG's, bro. GG's. You guys asked for this. You guys asked for the mid ladder uh, match. Well done. <laughs> well, okay. Well, had he actually connected on that last fireball, what would have uh, maybe just some final thoughts on on that deck and and how to handle those kind of matchups? I mean. His error, it's a lot of people, it's an error that a lot of people make mm -hmm. when they're, they've got an upper hand against 3M is wasting their elixir advantage like he did with that Mega Knight. Mm -hmm. He didn't need it. He had two furnaces up. He could have tanked with Skarmy or Bats or even a Baby Dragon and those would have died and I would have not won the game with the left side push. But him wasting that seven elixir on a Mega Knight on a tower that I was already sacking and counting on going down. Which is why I went for the three count gave me a huge window. Yeah. And I was asking him to fireball because I already had my three M ready and okay. I didn't want to fireball for three M. Gotcha. So, All right, makes sense. And he had his and he had his Mega Knight. So you think that his big mistake was just playing too kind of aggressively on defense towards the end there. He could have just slow played, not let you build a bunch of elixir and waited to see what you wanted to do first. Yeah, and he went very aggressive towards the end when well, not towards the end, but was like roughly a minute before the game ended, you saw his baby dragon, and then he also scarred me right on top of that. Yep, yep. And my horde just completely ate it. Yeah. All right, well, hey, fifth and final deck here. You're currently 4-0, so let's see if we can make this a uh, a flawless video here. And it's the Hog Lumberjack deck, which we've seen a lot of. Uh, I think Rainbow popularized it originally a few months ago. And now it's kind of a little bit different. No Tombstone, we have Lightning in there. So why don't you hop into a match and, and tell us about why oh, you're in a match. Tell us about why you like this deck. The song about the Ice, wiz ice Wizard on Mega Minion, it's pretty much what I said, but it's got Lumberjack instead of Tombstone. Mm -hmm. Is he going to Just ballooned in the back. Okay. Yeah, it's Lumberjack instead of Tombstone, and it gives the rage value that you can't find anywhere else because, uh, unpopular opinion, Lumberjack is very strong. Yesterday, oh, I, agree, I was yeah. playing a. Uh, best of five against a pro who i will not name but um battle ram was banned and i substituted ram for lumberjack and it worked perfectly like the rage effect of lumberjack mm -hmm. gave the same more value than a charging ram with a 3m and the horde in the back yeah so the the strength of lumberjack is honestly very unrecognized and unviewed as Mostly because I guess people don't know how to use him right. Okay. So when you say use him right, talk about the use cases in in this uh, deck specifically. For example, are you always using him on defense first and trying to get some value there, then the counter push with Hog, or is there sometimes you'll just lumberjack at the bridge with Hog behind him, like you would a knight or an ice golem? Lumberjack and Hog isn't really that much of a good like strategy, mm -hmm. but if you for say counter push with the lumberjack, your lumberjack dies on their side of the field. Then you can go hog and maybe either ice was and then have a NATO ready, or 
you could just lightning like I lightning his Inferno Dragon and got a bunch of damage on the tower here. He's gonna balloon again. Yeah. And he's gonna minor. I I'm gonna have to use that NATO on the loon and not the minor. Mm -hmm. and he's... Uh he's not gonna minor. Pressure, alright. Now, Lumberjack value. This is what it's all about. Yeah. And is that how that's exactly how you play Lumberjack in this deck. So you use him defensively, you wait till he dies, and then you try to eat up a little bit of the rage, right, with a hog on the counter. Yep, and here I'm hoping that I don't lose this because I've split up my damage a lot. Mm-hmm. But you do have Nate. We're you, gonna, yeah. See, I could have gone with Ice Column against that executioner, but then I wouldn't be able to do this. Very, very good point. Hog gets to that tower under Dude. the rage and is definitely going to be tower down. Very well played. Yep. And Lumberjack, um, you, you know how it's so abundant in Golem decks too? Yep. I tend to really like rushing the bridge with Lumberjack because it's... Unless you have Goblin Gang or something that can swarm, a mini P.E.K.K.A. or Bell gets in neutral trade. It's something kind of abandoned when before he got nerfed that you need something to overcommit in order to kill. It's something like if they play a giant, you lumberjack and then you proceed to defend with your golem trees like that with Tweep Dragon NATO. They waste a key element in defending a puny lumberjack. And I see a puny well, because it's only four elixir and it's not necessarily the win condition of the deck. Mm -hmm. But it's so viable in different scenarios and definitely I say top five in the legendary. So. Oh, yeah. I agree with you 100%. I think that Lumberjack is just... It's seldom do you place a Lumberjack down on the arena and feel like you're not getting some sort of value from it. So, yeah. And he hits so dang fast. It's just crazy. But, dude, well, yeah, congrats on the 5-0. and oh. <laughs> thank, you for, uh, thank you for sharing the, your top five ladder decks. I still am not sold on number two, but you know what? Despite mm. that, you, 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 uh, you definitely made a good case for it in your uh, dominating battle in the arena there. So, Mini, thanks again for coming on the channel, man. Any uh, shout-outs? Anything we need to know about in the life of Mini Minter? Yeah, shout out to my boy Magic Archer for being <laughs> the best card in the game. I'll yeah, be pushing you guys with go him way back. This you guys go way back, yeah. He's always been I'll there be for you. I'll be pushing with my boy this season just to <laughs> have you document it. All right, all right, man. Maybe we can do a little docu series on on your relationship and, and how it evolves. So, dude, thanks again for coming on, man. Really appreciate you're always uh, uh, really fun guest. I think you're one of my viewer favorites. A lot of people comment on that. They really like the the snarkiness. So, thanks for bringing that to the table, bro. And we'll have you back soon uh, in the future. Yeah, a lot of people also like mentioning. I thought this was the other mini mentor. That is true. Comments. Those are the two most so. <laughs> popular comments, I think. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, thanks again for coming on, man, guys. If you want to check out Mini Mentor's uh, Twitter profile, his stats real uh, stats, his game log, anything like that, if you want to stalk him, feel free to do so. That will all be linked in the uh, show notes below, guys. A huge shout out to Mini again and to Brent Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, take care, guys.